Mombasa style dal kachori are crispy pastry covered dal and green mango snacks. This recipe is inspired by the hot and sour mung dal kachori sold at Bhagwanji Sweet Mart in Mombasa, Kenya. They're the snack of my father's childhood and this is a recipe that we together have developed over the years. Hey guys, I have the first of our Diwali special recipes to share with you this week. And I couldn't be more excited because this is one that is really close to my heart. This is a recipe that I have spent years and years perfecting with my dad because these special Kenyan style kajoris are his absolute favorite. They feature a mung dal and green mango filling that's encased in a lovely light and spicy crispy pastry and they are shaped into these cute little balls and they're super super delicious to eat. And sometimes I feel like kachoris are the forgotten little sister of samosa because people do tend to forget about them. I don't see them on restaurant menus and I don't see people raving about them as much as I see like the mainstream love for samosa. So I really want today to be like an outpouring of love for that forgotten little sister, this humble, beautiful, most delicious kachori. So today's recipe is a tribute to my dad, who is an absolute legend and a complete hero in my life. And he's always been there to support me. And what we love to do together as a family is cook together. And I feel like just cooking and eating and just coming to get people coming together over great food is just the pinnacle of just happiness and love in my life. So this recipe is for him. Um, he grew up uh, in Mombasa in Kenya. He's originally from Tanzania. Um, but these are the kachoris that my dad grew up eating and they're based on um, a very, very popular delicacy over there. Lots of people from Mombasa in Kenya will know of Pogwanji's uh, dal kachori and they are famous and for the right reasons. They are so flaky, so spicy and the balance that you get from the chili, the sugar, the green mango, the sourness of the green mango is just, just phenomenal. It will blow your mind. This is the best kachori recipe that I know personally. And if you aren't familiar with kachori, then if you like samosa, then you are gonna love this. So please give it a go. It is perfect for sharing, perfect for um, gifting, uh, Diwali gifting, or just as a simple starter. I like to uh, make these in advance and then half fry them, stow them away in the freezer and then when you have last minute guests you can just pull them out, you can chuck them in the oven, the air fryer um, or just fry them again. Tap the link in the description box to grab a full list of ingredients you need to make this recipe. For this kachori filling we need yellow skinless mung dal which I'm first going to wash in plenty of cold water. Now allow the dal to soak in hot water for a maximum of 2 hours. Drain the soaked dal and place it in a pot filled with plenty of water. Add ground turmeric and the soaked dal. Bring this to the boil and cover with a lid. Simmer the mung dal for around 10 to 15 minutes. It should be around 90% cooked. Keep checking and remove it from the heat when the dal breaks when you press it between your fingers. It shouldn't mash completely however. Now drain the dal and set it aside. Heat oil in a frying pan and add some finely chopped onions. Plenty of minced ginger and chilies. Stir everything well and saute just until the onions have softened, about 2-3 to three minutes. Don't brown them though. Now add the onion mixture to the cooked and drained dal. Now the most iconic thing about Mombasa style dal kachori is that they contain green mango, which is a raw mango. The flavour is super sour and so delicious against the spiciness of this dal filling. Now for some dry ground spices. Salt, ground fennel seeds, ground cloves, some ground cinnamon and sugar. Add fresh coriander leaves and sieve, which are fried chickpea flour noodles. 
Now stir this mixture well to combine. It might seem like a lot of spices, salt and sugar, but kachori filling must be strong. The dal is very bland by itself and requires this amount of seasoning to produce a good result, so don't hold back. To make the dough, first take plain flour in a bowl. Add toasted coarse semolina, which is going to give the dough a really delicious depth of flavour. And salt. Mix it briefly to combine. Add soft but not melted ghee. And some oil. A combination of both ghee and oil will give you fabulous flavour as well as a thin, light and crispy pastry. Use your fingertips to rub the flours and fats together, similar to making a short crust pastry or a crumble. This process is called morn in Hindi. The step is complete when the flour holds together in a solid mass when squeezed together in your palm, and it should crumble under gentle pressure. Next, add ice cold water and mix briefly to form a shaggy dough. Now turn it out onto a clean work surface and knead the dough for around 8 to 10 minutes until smooth and elastic. Pop the dough back into a bowl and cover. Set the dough aside for around 30 minutes. Once the dal mixture has cooled, mash it using a potato masher or babhaji masher. Whole dal should still be visible in the mixture, but it should be mashed enough so that it holds together when you press it into a ball shape. Form the dal mixture into approximately 24 gram balls. They shouldn't be too large. Arrange them on a large tray or plate. Divide the rested dough into 18 gram portions and then cover again. To form the kachori, take a portion of dough. Press it out to flatten onto your palm. It should be around 5 cm wide. Place the formed dal filling in the centre and gently pull the pastry around the dal to cover it. Now pinch the dough closed. Remove any excess by using the length of your index finger and thumb. Try to pull it gently from the top so that gravity naturally pulls the kachori down. This will give the kachori a very thin and even coverage. Pinch off any excess dough. Roll the ball gently between your palms, ensuring there are no creases or holes in the dough, especially where you sealed. If there are, the kachori will burst while you fry them and the filling will become really greasy. Repeat this process for the rest of the kachori.
To fry the kachori, first heat oil in a pan suitable for deep frying. Once the oil temperature reaches 160 degrees centigrade, that's 320 degrees Fahrenheit, you're ready to fry the kachori. Carefully place the kachori into the hot oil. Fry only a handful of them at a time, depending on the size of your pan. If you add too many at once, the oil temperature will drop and this will affect how your kachori cook. Try not to move the kachori around too much at first. Once the outer coating of pastry firms up, you can then begin to move them around so that they cook evenly. Use a perforated spoon or frying spider to bob the kachori around in the oil. Don't increase the temperature. A low frying temperature is ideal so that the kachori become very crispy. The semolina in the dough will ensure they don't absorb a lot of oil. If you'd like to half fry the kachori so that you can cook them from frozen later on, then you can stop frying at this point. They should be a pale blonde colour and then let them cool down and then stow them away in the freezer until you're ready to cook. Tap the link in my bio for a link to full freezing instructions. These half fried kachori are suitable for oven cooking and air frying. The kachori will take around 8 minutes over a medium low heat. After this time, you can increase the oil temperature to 175 degrees centigrade or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for the last two minutes. The kachori will turn a beautiful golden brown colour. Once they have reached this point, lift the kachori out of the oil and place them onto a plate lined with kitchen towel to absorb any excess oil. Repeat the frying process for all of the kachori, ensuring you allow the oil to cool down before you fry every new batch. Serve these Mombasa style dal kachori with my tamarind and date chutney. Let's crack one open to see the inside. This kachori pastry is so thin, crispy and flaky. If you liked this recipe and want more vegetarian comfort food recipes, then don't forget to hit subscribe.